The next type of decision-making scenario that you need to be comfortable with is special pricing decisions or once-off sales. So these are normally special orders, guys, and they are sales that are outside the company's main market. So it's not their normal sales, these are special orders. Okay, special once-off orders. And this isn't to be confused with the next section that we are going to look at. If you just page over, you'll see in the next section, we are going to look at long-run pricing decisions. And this is where we deal with the company's normal sales. Okay, so our pricing is very different when it's a once-off sale or a special order, or if it's the company's normal sales. So first, what we are going to do is we're going to look at how we should price once-off sales or special orders. So like I already said, these are sales outside the company's main market, so it's not their normal sales, and it's normally a one-time order. And because it's a one-time order and it's not the company's normal sales, it's normally priced below the prevailing market price. And the reason for this is if it's a one-time order, we don't have to worry about covering our fixed costs. My normal sales will cover my fixed costs. If this is a once-off sale or a special order, I only need to worry about covering incremental costs. All right, so we don't have to worry about fixed costs. We only look at covering incremental costs. Let's look at a couple of examples so that this makes more sense. In example one, we have Walter PTY Limited, and they manufacture plastic storage boxes. The maximum monthly capacity is 30,000 units. So that's the maximum number of units they can make on a monthly basis. And their normal monthly demand is 25,500 units. So guys, they've got some spare capacity. They are not operating at full capacity. They can produce 30,000 units. And currently, their normal sales demand is 25,500 units. So that means they have spare capacity to make an extra 4,500 units if necessary. We told what the selling price is for each unit. They sell at 165 Rand per unit. We've got our variable cost per unit, 68 Rand. And we also have fixed costs of 304,000 Rand per month. They've received a special order for 6,000 units at a reduced selling price of 100 Rand per unit. So remember, we can see above, guys, the normal selling price is 165 Rand per unit. So if they sell these units at 100 Rand per unit, that's definitely at a reduced selling price. And we told here it is a special order. So it's a one-off special order for 6,000 units at a reduced selling price. If the order is accepted, it must be delivered in full within the next month. The normal demand will not be affected if the special order is accepted. So even if we accept the special order, our normal demand is still going to be 25,500 units a month. That doesn't change. We need to determine whether or not the special order should be accepted. Okay. So first, guys, we are going to do the calculation using the total approach. And remember, with the total approach, we are going to perform two separate calculations. We are going to calculate the current profit, ignoring the special order, and then we are going to calculate the profit if the order is accepted. All right, so let's first calculate the current profit, ignoring the special order. We know that the current selling price is 165 Rand per unit, and the normal monthly demand is 25,500 units. So we can easily calculate what the sales are ignoring the special order. We also know that the variable cost per unit is 68 Rand. So if we want to calculate the variable cost in total, it's 68 Rand per unit multiplied by the 25,500 units. And we know that the fixed costs are 304,000 Rand per month. So there we have the fixed costs of 304,000 Rand per month. 
So we can see the current profit, if they do not accept the special order, is 2,169,500 rand. All right, then we need to calculate the profit if the special order is accepted. Now guys, you just need to be careful. The company does not have enough capacity to deliver 6,000 units for the special order and another 25,500 units for their normal monthly sales because the capacity is limited to 30,000 units. In addition to that, we know that if the special order is accepted, it has to be delivered in full within the next month. So if they accept the special order, they have to deliver 6,000 units for the special order. They can't deliver 4,500 units. So if they have to deliver 6,000 units for the special order, that means their normal monthly sales cannot be 25,500 units because they don't have enough capacity. The normal monthly sales will have to drop to 24,000 units so that they can supply the 6,000 units for the special order. So when we are calculating the sales, we have normal sales of 24,000 units because they can't sell 25,500 units because they have to supply 6,000 units for the special order. So the 24,000 plus 6,000 is the total 30,000 units, their maximum capacity. Remember, normal sales are at a price of 165 Rand per unit and the special order is at a reduced selling price of 100 Rand per unit. So you can then calculate what the sales will be if the special order is accepted. Then for the variable costs, the variable cost per unit is 68 Rand and they will now be producing 30,000 units in total. So to calculate the variable cost in total, it's 68 Rand per unit multiplied by 30,000 units. And then for the fixed costs, please remember guys, fixed costs don't change with a change in volume. So regardless of whether they make 25,500 units or 30,000 units, the fixed cost in total is going to remain constant. So whether they accept the order or not, the fixed costs are going to be 304,000 Rand per month. All right, and then you can calculate the total profit if the special order is accepted. And now, because we are using the total approach, we need to compare the current profit if they don't accept the special order to the profit if the special order is accepted, and we can then conclude as to whether they should accept the special order or not. And you can see that the profit if the special order is accepted is higher. And the difference between these two over here is 46,500 Rand. So profit will increase by 46,500 Rand if the special order is accepted. So that means they should obviously accept the special order. So let's just go down to the conclusion. The special order should be accepted as it results in additional profit of 46,500 Rand. All right, so that deals with the total approach. We are now going to look at the incremental approach. Now, please remember, if you are using the incremental approach, you are not going to have the total approach to get your answer from. The incremental approach has to be a standalone calculation on its own. So you'll see over here, I haven't called this my incremental approach. I've called that just the difference. And I've worked out the difference in my sales the difference in my variable costs, the difference in my fixed costs, and I got the difference, the same difference that I worked out with the total approach. This calculation is however dependent on that calculation. I can't get that difference unless I have first done the calculation using the total approach, and that's incorrect. If you choose to use the incremental approach, it is a standalone calculation on its own. So you can see, there's my discussion just below. The incremental approach is a standalone calculation, and you should not be forced to perform the calculation using the total approach to get the answer. So therefore, we are going to consider the special order in isolation when we look at the incremental approach. And this is what my calculation is going to look like. So here's my incremental approach. You will see we still come to exactly the same conclusion 
If the special order is accepted, it results in additional profit of 46,500. So we come to the same answer, but this is a standalone calculation. And what we do is we consider the special order in isolation. So what is the additional or the incremental revenue? versus the incremental costs. And that is my incremental approach. So if I accept the special order, what is the additional revenue that I will earn? What are the additional costs that I will incur? And then I can tell you whether we should accept the order or reject the order. So what is the additional revenue that I earn? I will now sell 6,000 units at 100 Rand each in terms of the special order. So those are the sales that I will make on the special order. My variable costs will be 68 Rand per unit multiplied by 6,000 units. My fixed costs are not relevant because there is no incremental portion. If I accept the order or if I reject the order, my fixed costs do not change. They remain exactly the same. So because the fixed cost is not relevant, it is not taken into account. There is no incremental portion. Okay. What would you do if I told you in the question that as a result of this order, fixed costs of the company increased by 200,000 Rand? Then you do have an incremental fixed cost. If the fixed costs are increasing as a direct result of the order, then you need to take that into account. But you won't take the total fixed cost into account you only take the incremental portion. So if I tell you fixed costs increased by 200,000 Rand as a result of the order, you take the 200,000 Rand into account, not the total fixed cost, only the additional or the incremental portion. In this question, we are not told that our fixed costs change as a result of the order, so there is no incremental portion, it's left out completely. We did already also see that with the total approach. Then there's one extra thing that I need to consider, and this is going to wrap up the principle that I covered at the beginning of our lecture. I spoke about opportunity costs, and I told you opportunity costs are only relevant when we look at the incremental approach. With the total approach, we don't take opportunity costs into account, but with the incremental approach, we must take opportunity costs into account. So you can see that below as well. I've just emphasized it again because it is very important. Now, how do I know that I have an opportunity cost in this question? The reason why I know I have an opportunity cost in this question is because the company only has capacity to make 30,000 units. That is their maximum capacity, which means if I sell 6,000 units in terms of the special order, I only have 24,000 units left for my normal sales. However, I would preferably like to sell 25,500 units on the external market. So I have to make a sacrifice. If I accept the special order, I will not sell 25,500 units on the external market. I will only be able to sell 24,000 units if I accept the special order. So that means I'm sacrificing or I'm giving up 1,500 units. And wherever the company has to sacrifice something or give something up, we have an opportunity cost. So that is how I know I need to do a calculation for the opportunity cost. How do I work out the RAND value of my opportunity cost? Remember at the beginning of this lecture, I said to you it is the lost contribution. So if I accept the special order, I will have additional income from selling these 6,000 units. I'll have additional variable costs relating to producing those units, but I'm also going to lose out on selling 1,500 units on my normal sales. What are my normal sales? What is the normal selling price? I normally sell these units at 165 Rand each, and my variable costs are 68 Rand. So what is the contribution on my normal sales? Remember guys, contribution is just sales minus my variable costs. So on my normal sales, I sell at 165 Rand, my variable cost is 68 Rand. So what is my contribution per unit on my normal sales? It is 97 Rand. 
So if I don't sell these 1,500 units on the external market, I'm going to lose out on 97 Rand per unit. That's the contribution I'm losing out on, which means in total, I'm losing out on 145,500 Rand. You need to take the opportunity cost into account and then you come to exactly the same answer. Now, why do I only take the opportunity cost into account when I'm looking at the incremental approach? Why did I not take it into account with the total approach? With the total approach, guys, you have already taken it into account because when you calculate your sales over here by accepting the special order, I base my sales on 24,000 units and on 6,000 units. So I've already decreased my normal sales. I'm not basing my normal sales on 25,500 units. I'm basing my normal sales on 24,000. So you've already taken into account the fact that your normal sales are going to drop by 1,500 units just by calculating this amount over here. That already takes the drop of 1,500 into account. So with the total approach, we don't need to worry about calculating the opportunity cost because it has already been taken into account by reducing my units over there. However, with the incremental approach, because we are looking at the special order in isolation, I'm only looking at the special order. I'm looking at the 6,000 units in terms of the special order. Nowhere in this calculation have I taken into account the fact that my normal sales are going to drop from 25,500 units to 24,000 units. So I need to take that into account. This is taking into account the fact that although this is going to result in extra money for the company, I am going to lose out on some of my normal sales. And you must take that into account. And you guys can then see the net effect is I'm sitting with exactly the same answer. The order should be accepted because I have an additional profit of 46,500 rand. Okay, and obviously my incremental approach, the calculation is completely different to this difference column because like I said to you, the difference column, I just calculated by saying the difference in my revenue, the difference in my costs. However, the incremental calculation must be a standalone calculation. It must not be based on what I have already calculated with the total approach. So you can't just calculate the differences like that. That is not the incremental approach even though it results in exactly the same answer, you are not working out the effect of the special order. You're working out the difference between these two. So please make sure you do the calculation there properly.